Good day and welcome to P to your next lesson on quadratic relations. Our goal today is I know what the key features are of a quadratic relation and I can use a graph to identify them. Uh, before watching this video I hope you've already completed investigation A and B from your text on page 254 to 256 and you need a graphing calculator to do that. So if you haven't done that already you need to stop this video and go and do that. Uh, if you've already done that let's carry on with the properties of parabolas. Um, you should have found when you were doing your investigation that a parabola has these properties. It has a vertex. Now what do I mean by a vertex? Uh, I mean this point right here. It's the turning point of the parabola and on this particular parabola here if we take a look at our scale uh, it looks like the x-coordinate of this if we go way up here looks like it's 3 and the y coordinate is negative 4. So the vertex of this particular parabola is 3, negative 4. Now I have a second parabola over here. It's upside down, uh, but it's a parabola just the same. Its vertex is negative 6 and negative 2. So there's our two parabolas vertexes and this is the turning point we know it's the turning point because it's going up 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 Oop, nope now it's going down and same thing over here down 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 whoop right turn there we go going up again okay now the axis of symmetry um, this parabolas are very symmetric and when we say the axis of symmetry we actually mean this mirror line that goes right down the center of a parabola cuts it right in half so that if I actually cut these out and folded them up along this line every point would overlap with the other one. Now the axis of symmetry always goes right through the vertex and every single point on this axis of symmetry has the same x value as this vertex. If I pick this point on the axis of symmetry, yep that has the same x value as the vertex. If I pick this point has the same x value as the vertex. So what we do is we label this x equals and then all of the x's on here are equal to 3 so we're going to call it x equals 3. Now over here all of the x's on this one since it passes through this point they're all the same. They're all negative 6. So we call this line x equals negative 6. So that's the axis of symmetry. Now a maximum or minimum value, that's the highest or lowest point on a parabola and whether you have a high point or a low point depends on whether your parabola is right side up or upside down. For this one here that is right side up, it has a minimum value and the lowest it gets to, when we're talking about high and low, we're always talking about that y coordinate. So the lowest it possibly gets to is that negative 4, so it has a minimum value of negative 4. Now over here on this blue parabola here, it has a high point because it's upside down and so it gets to a point where it's going to go no higher than that. And again, we're looking for the y coordinate, so this is what we want, this negative 2. So this parabola that's upside down has a maximum of negative 2. And the last thing I want to talk about are the intercepts. The intercepts are the points where a parabola crosses the x and the y axis. So let's take a look at this red right side up parabola. Uh, it crosses the y axis right here. That looks like it's crossing the y axis at uh, 5. So the y intercept is 5. Now it's crossing the x intercept, the x axis here, and it's crossing the x axis here. So there's actually two x intercepts. There won't be two y intercepts because it's going to keep going in the same direction. But there's two x intercepts. There's an x intercept here of 1, and that looks like 5. So 1 and 5 are the x intercepts of this parabola. Now we run into some difficulties when we look at this one because we can't see any intercepts at all on this parabola. Um, it doesn't cross the x-axis and it never will because it's upside down and it's below it. So there are no x-intercepts. 
And as far as the y-intercepts are concerned, there will eventually be one, but we can't actually see it. This is going to go on forever in this direction. So eventually, it's going to cross this y-axis somewhere, but we can't tell where from this picture. So we can't really say what the y-intercept is from this picture either. It's too bad we couldn't stretch it out a little bit, and then we could figure it out. OK, so let's summarize. Uh, here's a few more graphs. I want to take a look and see what all of the properties are of these particular graphs. So we start with the vertex. So this vertex is, remember we do the x first, then the y. So that's 2, negative 4. Uh, it has an axis of symmetry that goes right through that vertex. If I draw it on, uh, it will be right down the center here. Ooh, that's a really big thick line. And the way we name it is we say x equals whatever all those x values will be. And we know they're all 2 because it goes through that vertex. So x equals 2. This parabola is right side up. So it has a low point on it, which means it has a minimum value. And that minimum value, the lowest it gets to is the y coordinate of the vertex, negative 4. And lastly, the x and the y intercepts, well, it crosses the x-axis at 0 and 4. So the x-intercepts, we say, are 0 and 4. And the y-intercept, it crosses at 0, too. So the y-intercept is 0. Okay, next one. This one happens to be upside down. Now I want to point out here that the major difference here between these two that are right side up and this one here that's upside down is this little tiny negative sign out in front of the x squared. That's what's causing this thing to flip upside down is this negative sign right there. These two don't have it. They're right side up. Okay, so looking at this one, here's our vertex. Our vertex is at negative 4, positive 4. So negative 4, 4 is our vertex. Our axis of symmetry goes right through the center of the parabola, just like that. And that axis of symmetry is always x equals and what all those x's are, which since it goes through the vertex, we know that it has an x of negative 4. So all of them will have an x of negative 4. Now, it has a maximum value because it has a high point, and that maximum value, the highest that it possibly gets to, is the y-coordinate of the vertex. It's that 4, so it has a maximum of 4. Uh, the x-intercepts are negative 6 and negative 2. x-int of negative 6 and negative 2. And we can't see the y-intercept, but it looks like it might be somewhere down about 9. I'm not going to write it down because we don't know exactly where it is. Okay, one more. Here's the vertex. Negative 3, negative 2. And uh, it opens up, which means that it has a minimum value, and that minimum value is going to be the lowest point it gets to, which is negative 2. It has an axis of symmetry that goes right through the center of our graph, and that axis of symmetry we label as x equals, and what are all the x's on this line? They're all that negative 3, the same as the vertex. And it has x-intercepts here, that looks like about negative 4.5, the x-intercept at negative 4.5, and negative 1.5 right there, there's our two x-intercepts negative 1.5 and then a y-intercept that looks like it's 7 a y-int at 7 okay so here a parabola opens up if the coefficient of x squared is positive remember it was that little negative sign that was causing it to flip over so the parabola opens oh sorry that was down I read it as up Parabola opens down if it's negative, up if it's positive. So this should say negative. That little negative sign causes it to flip over. So a parabola opens down if it has that little negative there. A parabola has a maximum value 
a maximum value, a high point, if it opens down, and a minimum value, it has a low point, if it opens up. The vertex is the turning point of the parabola. The x-coordinate of the vertex gives us the axis of symmetry, and the y-coordinate of the vertex gives us the max or the min value. And the intercepts occur when the parabola crosses the x and y axis. Now we're going to work with the graphing calculator. Uh, and this may take a little bit of time. So I'm actually going to stop the video right here and we'll make a second video with how to work the graphing calculator.